Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. If you are new here, my name is Tiffany and I raise rabbits, primarily the breeds Silver Fox and Creme d'Argent. Rabbits are incredibly versatile animals and the primary purpose for us to have rabbits on our homestead was for meat. I grew up with rabbits in 4-H and showed them as a kid and so <laughs> Instead of just having them for meat as an adult, it has very much evolved into a obsession with showing as well. Um, but through that, I have greatly improved my own herd. To me, it's been an invaluable tool to go to shows because um, one thing about the American Rabbit Breeders Association is the fact that the standard was developed with the most meat yield in mind for meat rabbits. So um, improving them this way through showing and through um, selective breeding and all of that has really helped in our meat production as well. It's just a really fun hobby also. I get to hang out with like-minded friends that show rabbits and it's always a great thing. So, uh, but this video is not about showing actually. This video is going to cover how I make my own fried rabbit from the rabbits we have butchered on our homestead. I know that sometimes butchering rabbits can be a very touchy subject with some folks, um, especially people that have rabbits as pets, and I totally get that um, at the same time. They also make really great farm animals. One of the main pushes for me to get into meat rabbits actually was to get away from factory farming. When you eat chicken from the grocery store, when you eat pork or whatever, you don't know what living conditions it's been in. Raising rabbits allowed me to take hold of uh, the living conditions and basically I know exactly how my rabbits were raised. I know that there was never any harm done to them and in the end I know that they only get to have one bad day and that is butcher day. And for me it's kind of a way that I am taking hold of my own food and making sure that the animals that I'm consuming, I know they lived a good life. Um, so that is the reason that I eat rabbits and I know, like I said, I know a lot of people just don't understand it and that's okay. Not everybody has to eat rabbits. I really enjoy rabbit as a protein source. So does my husband um, and my dogs do as well. It's just been an overall great experience to be able to butcher our own rabbits and make it into a really delicious meal and also just know that that's where our food came from and they're, they're very happy and it's been, it's been really great. So in today's video, I am going to take you guys through the entire process of how I make fried rabbit with mashed potatoes and green beans. It's an entire meal video. I know most people know how to make mashed potatoes. I know most people know how to make green beans on the stove, whatever, but I'm still gonna take you through the entire process because just in case you are newer to cooking, it might be helpful to you. I also wanted to mention very quickly that when frying a rabbit like this, it's a very high heat, very quick cook time. Typically you want to use a younger fryer rabbit. An adult rabbit that's been butchered out is probably going to be a little bit on the tougher or drier side, but a younger fryer rabbit anywhere between the ages of 8 to 16 weeks old typically is going to be the ones that you want to use for frying. But typically what I like to do, especially when I'm frying a rabbit um, or planning on frying a rabbit, is I will butcher the rabbit. Um, either myself or my husband and I will butcher the rabbit and then we'll take them into the house, we'll clean them off really good and then I have been bagging them in salt water and I usually leave them in this salt water mixture for around three to four days. It's best if you can dump out the salt water daily and refresh it with new salt water. Resting in the fridge helps to do a couple of different things. It draws out more blood over the course of a couple of days and it also allows the rabbit to rest in turn making it more tender. We were butchering and putting directly into the freezer and we actually learned that doing it that way, and I know there's lots of different opinions. We've tried so many different things, honestly, um, but I've learned that just putting them straight into the freezer can actually make them tougher because you're not allowing rigor mortis to happen. Um, and that's just the where, where the meat rests and kind of relaxes. Um, so nowadays I've been letting them rest in the fridge and I actually think that they've been really good uh, since then. They, I mean, they were really good before, but like now it's like leveled up, <laughs> I guess. But that's what we've been doing. And then um, for this fried rabbit, preparing it, I parted it out the morning of and then kind of patted it dry and put it on a plate 
sprinkled some salt over it and just let it rest there for the rest of the day. And then that afternoon, I was ready to cook it. So that's kind of what I did. Um, you don't have to do those last steps at all, but that's just, that's what I did for this recipe. So let's go ahead and get started into making our fried rabbit meal. So first off, we're gonna begin by removing our rabbit from the fridge. And if you haven't parted it out yet, now is the time to do that. For frying, I typically use the back legs, front legs, and loin and reserve the rest of the rabbit for pressure cooking, shredding, and making pot pie filling soup or barbecued pulled rabbit. Our goal of pulling it out of the fridge before we start making anything else is to let the rabbit rest at room temperature for about a half an hour or so to take the chill off, which will help our oil maintain its temperature while frying, as well as helping the rabbit cook faster. I have a tip for you guys, actually. If you have picky eaters in your house, but they like eating fried chicken or breaded chicken sandwiches from fast food joints, you can easily alter this recipe by cutting the meat off the bone and serving it as a breaded rabbit sandwich on a bun with mayonnaise and pickles or whatever toppings that you want on it. It's actually really, really delicious, and I actually prefer doing it that way sometimes myself. But this is a fried rabbit recipe, so we're going to continue on with frying the whole pieces. So as most of you guys know, it is just Jameson and I, we don't have any kids. So literally I'm just taking three Idaho potatoes and peeling them. Once your potatoes are all peeled, I like to cut them in half and then I like to cut them in half again. <laughs> and then from those halves, I make cubes. And basically it's just so it boils a little bit quicker. Place your cubed potatoes in a pot, cover with one to two inches of water and bring to a rolling boil on the stove. Now with my stove, I have to reduce the heat just a little bit, otherwise it's gonna boil over. <laughs> but you just want it to continue boiling for about 15 minutes or so. So I usually set my timer and then just let it go. After your potatoes have been boiling for 15 minutes or until fork tender, we're going to drain them in a colander. For this amount of potatoes, I'm gonna cut four tablespoons of butter and throw it in with the potatoes while they're still piping hot. For a larger batch of mashed potatoes, I would typically use my KitchenAid mixer, but since I'm only making enough for my husband and I, I'm using my well-loved pastry cutter here. <laughs> Something's wrong with it. I don't, I don't know what happened to it. Once the butter is all melted and I've mashed them up a little bit with my pastry cutter here, I add salt to taste along with a splash of half and half and continue mashing until I've got a really good mashed potato consistency. Mashed potatoes can easily be made in advance. They can be put in the fridge and heated up later, or you can put them in the oven on warm until the rest of the food is ready, and that's what I did this time. Next up, we're gonna make rabbit gravy using homemade rabbit bone broth. And if you guys have not seen my bone broth video yet, I would highly recommend you go check that out after this video because rabbit bone broth is very great to make. It's very easy and it comes in handy for a lot of different recipes. First, I'm gonna cut about three tablespoons of butter and place in a medium saucepan and begin melting the butter over a medium to medium high heat. Once all your butter is melted, toss in a fourth cup of all-purpose flour and whisk it all together until homogenous. This is called a roux and this is the base for our gravy that will cause it to thicken. Add small amounts of broth at a time, whisking constantly and adding more broth as it thickens. For this specific batch of rabbit gravy, I used about three cups of broth. Add pepper to taste along with a little garlic and onion powder if you want it to be more flavorful. Just like the mashed potatoes, gravy is something that can easily be made in advance. And finally, we're getting to the part that you actually came here for, the fried rabbit. Using a Dutch oven or deep fryer, we're going to fill it with several inches of oil. 
I'm using canola oil here, but you're welcome to use any oil of your choosing that has a high smoke point. Sunflower, peanut, avocado, and vegetable oils are all good options. We reuse our oil several times for frying, and that's why I'm pouring it through the cheesecloth here. Begin heating your oil over medium to medium high heat. Our goal temperature is between 375 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. While our oil is heating up, it's time to prepare the rabbit. In a medium to large bowl, add two cups of all-purpose flour, and on come the plethora of spices. For my fried rabbit recipe, I use two teaspoons of smoked paprika, two teaspoons ground white pepper, two teaspoons garlic salt, two teaspoons celery salt, two teaspoons celery seed, one teaspoon ground turmeric powder, one teaspoon thyme leaves, half a teaspoon ground cayenne, one teaspoon ground mustard, two teaspoons onion powder, and some freshly ground black pepper. Yes, it's a lot of spices, but this flavor combination is amazing. And don't forget to whisk it all together for a nice even coating. In another bowl, crack three eggs and whisk vigorously. Finally, it's time to coat the rabbit. First, coat each cut in the flour mixture evenly. Once all the pieces are coated in the initial coating of flour, dredge them one by one in egg, followed by a second coating of flour. You'll notice the flour mixture will begin developing some crumbs. This is fine, as these crumbs will fry into delicious crispy pieces on the rabbit. Now by all means you can stop here or you can be reckless like me and you can go for a second dredge and third coating of flour if you like it extra crispy. When your oil reaches between 375 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit, it's ready for frying. This should always be said when frying with oil, but be very, very careful and add pieces one at a time, taking care to spread the pieces out evenly in the pot and not splash. Once all of your pieces have been added, set a timer for 10 minutes and continue checking the oil, making sure it maintains around 350 degrees. While the rabbit is frying, this is when I heat up my green beans. These are green beans that my parents canned last year. For the beans, it's as simple as heating them up on the stove and they're good to go. In the summer, we like to use fresh green beans from the garden, sauteed in garlic, salt, and olive oil. Halfway through the rabbit cooking, I like to flip all of the pieces to make sure all sides are cooking evenly. After 10 minutes, it's time to test for doneness. Using preferably an instant read thermometer, test the smaller cuts first. We want to see an internal temperature of at least 165 degrees. Larger pieces like the back legs might require a little more time. Drain your fried rabbit on paper towels and admire that crispy exterior, then celebrate because it is finally time to eat. This is the 
crunch test. <laughs> it's hard to eat this with one hand. It's really good, guys. Let me know if you try this recipe. I would love to hear in the comments below. Let me know if you like it, and hopefully this was helpful to you. Thank you guys so much for watching my video, and I will see you next time.